nice day to be out in the garden, and Carol Ann Bowler is going to take us there virtually anyway through her words. Today, it's all about the garden on In the Garden with Carol Ann. Carol Ann Baldwin is, of course, a master gardener, and the phone line is open this entire hour. If you have a question about your, your lawn, your garden, you just want to get some advice on that tulip that you planted. It's probably a bad choice. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Carol... Well, we'll give you some advice on it. <laughs> Carol Ann is here. 622-9622 is the number. Good morning, Carol Ann. Good morning, Larry. Yeah, I'll give you the advice on that tulip you planted. Why didn't you just throw it away when it was done? <laughs> <laughs> they don't do well. I had... When, when I lived in Bellevue, though, mm -hmm. I used to cut my grass just kind of... just just cut right, it i never did anything grass, yeah. and one time i di i didn't you know i, I skipped a week or whatever right, and right. tulips started growing up along the walkway because the old man who lived there before me was from russia i think my neighbor said okay and he planted them but they only showed up now and then well yeah but if, they were we really pretty cold if we'd had a cold winter i'm surprised they actually came up and flowered and not rotted in between on that, yeah, and, and yeah, and I had yeah. been there a few years before right. I ever saw them. But anyway, you you got, right. got right a phone off, call right off the bat. Good morning, you're on the air with Carol Ann. Good morning. Morning. I have a. Uh, how are you this morning? Good. Good. I have a uh, blackjack oak. Okay. And it's got uh, like about a million three sixteenths holes. Like somebody drilled it. Mm. Uh, could be a woodpecker, or I'm scared it's those uh, boar weevils or whatever you call it. I don't want to contaminate the rest of my trees. No sawdust on the bottom. Any way to figure out what it is? Oh, yeah. are they all in like a line? No, they're absolutely everywhere from the from the base all the way up as far as I can see, and there is a lot of them. Oh, that yeah, that doesn't it, sound good. That sounds almost that sounds like a weevil because you figure a woodpecker's not going to generally be down at ground level. They'll and if be. There were so many. Yeah, and if there was that many holes from a woodpecker, we certainly would have heard it. That's what I would have thought. Right, right, and you'd see, and you would see trash on it. Yes, you would have heard it. You would have seen it. Um, normally, when a woodpecker does something, a lot of times it's in a line that they will, you know, that they'll go around, and they may just be pecking small. Um, not even necessarily even going after something. They could just be pecking to be um, making sounds. You know, to a, you know, talking to one another because they do some of their some of their pecking is communication. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, you, I think those you'd have found a more going circular around the tree, uh, with it up and down the trunk. I'm saying you've got some type of weevil or uh, or borer going in there. Now, would I have to take the tree down? And if so, do I need to haul it off, or can I just burn it? I have plenty of room to burn. Oh, you should just be able to burn it, I would figure. I mean, I don't and think there's... And if I don't do something, I just don't want to contaminate the rest of the trees. Is that um, usually what happens? It's, I mean, they eventually they would emerge and they're going to move. Um, they're apt to migrate. You probably would do better of, of taking it out while you're seeing it now because i mean that's a that's a lot how much have they come in and gone out that yes the adults will then travel to another tree that tree may have been stressed to begin with and that's why so many of them congregated to that tree i would check the trees you know the oaks that are nearby but um you figure the adult can travel so it wouldn't necessarily yeah so i think i would probably err on the side of removing the tree and having it and 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 burn it because removing it you may just be carrying the larvae somewhere else to a to another causing another problem somewhere else yeah and it's, it's extremely healthy looking it's a nice looking tree hmm. so i hate the idea of having to cut it down but that being said, I don't want to lose every other tree. Right, right. You don't want it to continue forth. And once there's, yeah, once there's holes starting to go in, if it starts to uh, take over more and more of the bark, if you recall when we had a southern pine beetle issue, uh, you begin to break that cambium layer in, in too much of a section, and you will begin to see, <clears throat> excuse me, your decline uh, begin to happen, maybe not this year, but over the next year or two years as the, uh, you know, the larvae feed, you know, hatch out, feed, come back out, um, either, either continue into another section on that same tree or travel and find another host tree to, to okay. do their thing. Well, I sounds like it's got to go and I certainly appreciate the answers. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hey, Thank bye you bye. for the call. Yeah. So. Hey, I always Thank hate you. to get, send somebody, a, a, basically, he's kind of saying, unless you can cut it down yourself of sending somebody a, a large bill on removing a tree. Right. But
Pat right. Sajak. Yeah. Happens, oh yeah. You know. So what, what did he say? Bull weevil. <clears throat> he had a, he had no a weevil or, or a, a weevil. Boar, a boar a of boar. some kind. Okay. A boar, boar, b o r e r boar. <laughs> uh, that'll go in into the trunk of the tree, into the branching, and in, and things like that. And they'll lay an egg in there. The egg will hatch. The uh, larvae will then feed I in see. there yeah. and uh, come back out, start the life cycle again, and. Uh, you know, there's certain trees that are more susceptible than others. Uh, certain beetles or certain other pests, like the pine, the southern pine beetle, right, only right, did right. pine trees. And generally, the loblolly pine um, was its number one target, right. though it did do some of the other ones. And and usually, it is it will be a stressed plant that's attacked first. Is this a microscopic bug or no? <clears throat> no, no, you no. Can no. See you, know, okay. you would be able to see it on the on the. Uh, the beetles and things like that, actually, the larvae can be quite large. I mean, the, the larvae are like a grub, uh, can be any small up to, you know, very almost like the size of your finger right. um, inside the tree. And then the, uh, then you know, the beetles can be a little teeny beetle. It depends on which one it is that's attacking it. You know, there are some wood destroying wow, beetles. Wow, it sounds that like there's a lot of ones. holes in his tree. Yeah, it sounds like it's it sounds like uh tree we probably call would shotgun, die? shotgun shelling. The, uh, eventually it the would, tree would know, die from that, die. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because again, like the way the pine beetle did, it eventually it destroys that cambium layer, preventing the tree from circulating water and nutrition up and down oh, through really? the plant. And uh that's how you know and then you know it might take it a couple of years especially on a tree that was fairly healthy to begin with but many times it is a stressed tree uh one thing they had learned with the pine beetle was that trees that had been pruned um or damaged whether or not with weed whackers or or anything like that a limb that maybe had whipping shed it off. maybe to make it <laughs> bear fruit we don't do that with pine trees and oaks so. <laughs> Uh, but those were ones that were more susceptible, and once they came into the the stressed tree, they had no no problem heading to another tree that was right nearby. Mm. So that was that was quite an issue we had with those. Luckily, knockwood. It's been several years since we've had the big pine beetle problem, so we're hoping it's eradicated. Yeah, yeah. In this area, it doesn't pop up anytime soon. Phone lines are open if you want to call Carol Ann. We've got another minute before we go to our first break, but there's 45 minutes left in this show. Plenty of time for you to chat about your lawn, your garden, your trees. Your trees, your veggies. Your T- today, by the way, is National Audubon Day. That's about the birds, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, Audubon. Yeah, Audubon. So. National Audubon. Go appreciate the birds. Appreciate the birds. I had, I don't know you know, how many of the listeners had seen, I had a, I had a butterfly yesterday that we, I spent some time online. We got it, finally got it identified. Oh, and, really? And uh, it was, it was, I had never seen one like it, the colorations. And I do, I have seen the hair streaks, because uh, it's a hair streak butterfly, um, if you uh, if you're on the in the garden Facebook group page, you can see it. Uh, I love your page, by the yeah, way. That's so a, we'll, a, just a we fun might page. Even talk about that. It's like your show. Bit. I love your yeah, show. It's a good show. We got a good. Uh, we got a phone call. I should All say. Right. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Hey. Good morning. Good morning, Dennis. Dennis. Hey, yeah. Dennis. Hey, uh, guy. I play, guy. I play softball with. He's about my age in the mid seventies or something like that. Uh huh. He gave me four four tomato plants. Okay. About, a couple inches tall. And I asked him. I said, Well, what variety are these? And he said. I don't know," he oh. said. "I got them from my father, who got them from his father. Oh my! This is this is now his grandfather. Uh-huh. He said, and he planted these uh, seeds and grew tomatoes just after he got out of World War II. My, and he's been saving the seeds and making plants. So these four plants I got are are as old as the end of World War II, as far wow. as wow, the generations. <laughs> hmm. That is cool. Can you imagine that? Wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> well, when you grow out your your tomatoes, do let us know what kind of what type was it—a nice meaty tomato uh, or or what it what it was. Well, he eats them all the time. He says they're really a productive one, but I just didn't know that any tomato could. You know, the, I mean, you told me that some varieties you could, you know, grow the seeds from, but I didn't know they would. This is that's definitely that that's one I would definitely call an heirloom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll yeah. let you know how they taste. Okay, sounds great. Thank you. Yeah. All right, bye. Thank you for the call. All right, we'll take a break. Be right back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. This Tuesday, partly sunny with highs ranging from 81 at the coast to 89 inland. Clear Tuesday night, low 64 inland, about 70 along the coast. 
For Wednesday, partly sunny with a shower or thunderstorm in spots in the afternoon, but mainly dry along the coast. The high 83 at the coast, 89 inland. Thursday, partly sunny, a very warm high 85 at the coast, up to 92 inland. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hey folks, that bigger ad means better than ever deals this week at Bob Wines Camellia Gardens in Ocala. Take a quick listen to just store for you. Wildly colorful crepe myrtle in pink, white, purple, fuchsia, red, regularly $24.99, but just $14.99 this week. Dwarf ever-blooming red ruffle azaleas, regularly $5.99, just $2.99. And there's that fabulous truckload sale on citrus trees. You can get a bear salmon or Persian lime for as little as $19.99, and larger sizes are available. Looking for a great bogo? Beautiful blooming confederate jasmine one get one free plus all their pottery 20 percent off hurry to bob wines camellia gardens southeast 38th street ocala just a mile east of south pine daily till four saturdays till three locally grown home owned in the same place since 1952 are you still fertilizing flowers and vegetables the old-fashioned way then switch to dynamite premium plant food the secret to more flowers, bigger blooms, and more vegetables is consistent feeding. Dynamite Premium Plant Food is formulated for our Florida climate and has a unique coating that releases nutrition consistently. So there are no peaks and no Dynamite is just a terrific product. It even contains the micronutrients plants need in small quantities for maximum growth. With Dynamite, you get an explosion of color, flowers, and vegetables. Dynamite comes in a handshake and feed plastic bottle. Just one application will last up to six months. For more flowers, bigger blooms, and more vegetables, try Dynamite Premium Plant Food today. Look for Dynamite at your Home Depot or Lowe's Garden Department. Visit on the web at dynamiteplantfood.com. Hey Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new yep, truck. Yep, we just... can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too. Well, as a matter of fact, join me, Matt Gibbs, from Sunrise Automotive every Tuesday at 10 for auto repair with personal care right here on The Source. All right, uh, 19 minutes after 9 o'clock. The phone lines are open if you would like to chat with Carol Ann Baldwin, whether it's a question or just uh, just want to say hi and give us uh, news. I like that's the, the last call, just telling us about the uh, the tomato plants. Right, right, and that's that's a true heirloom. And then, of course, you mentioned once we got off the air that, you know, we all know that there's a few places in the, in the world that actually collect seed and save seed should there ever be a worldwide... You know, destruction yeah, of, of yeah, things yeah. to where you had to have a seed source. And those are where the heirlooms are stored or quite a quantity of them. But you can store, if you grow heirloom vegetables yourself, which you can buy the seed uh, off of many of the seed racks commercially, or there's a couple of, of independent seed growers like Seed Savers Exchange, um, uh, many of the catalogs all have their own heirloom lines that they, that they go through. And once you have an heirloom, you can save that seed. It will come true to seed. Your hybrids are the ones that have been bred for certain characteristics, whether or not it's generally disease resistance, mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. well as, say, a, a great big huge bell pepper that is resistant to this disease, that disease, and the next disease. Um, your, your heirlooms don't have that effect. Your heirloom might grow a nice size bell pepper, but might still get a spotted wilt or something like that. So, uh, but you can save the seed, and every year you can grow mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. same pepper. Or in the in the order of a tomato, if you have an heirloom tomato, you can save the seeds. Not generally that hard. There's a few steps to do, but you do usually have to keep them under refrigeration to keep them for any extended time. Oh well. Yeah. Um, we do have a phone call right. waiting to say hi. Good morning. You're on the air with Carol Ann. Yes, good morning, guys. Good morning. Hey. See, I've got a kind of a problem here, and I'm in a kind of a slight state of panic with it. Uh-oh. Uh, I've got these uh, this little evergreen uh, kind of a bush. Okay. Uh, at, at the highest point, it's maybe not just a foot, but I've got a large area of it. A couple of years back, somebody told me that it might be a Japanese U. Is that a possibility? 
Um, most of our ewes are, are actually kind of big. I mean, we only have the one, really one or a hybrid of the Podocarpus uh, that is a ewe. That's, that's one of the ewe family. Yeah, well, anyway, this is a, a low evergreen kind of a, a bush, I call it, and okay. it's spread along a, a large area, and part of the area is it's starting to die out, and I'm trying to figure out what the heck's going on, and I see these little, I'm going to call them raccoons, okay. they're, they're real small, maybe about the size of half of your little finger, okay. and then I've seen a couple of them on the sidewalk, and like a little worm comes out of them, and they, they're like they're crawling. And I see them clinged all, they're clinging all over to the, the branches of, of this evergreen. Uh, yeah. What, what's going on here? Okay, yeah, you've got, you've got bagworms. You've got bagworms? Bagworms, yeah. That doesn't sound good. It's actually, it's not. You need to spray. Um, I would probably go with something like BT, because trying to spray the bagworm himself, he's got all that trash piled on top of him. He's create, created a little, like you say, almost like a little cocoon or a little pile, of, almost looks like a little pile of trash <laughs> that he's collecting up and carrying with him. Wow. And, um, something like BT, when sprayed on the leaves of the plant or on, on the foliage of it, when they consume that, when they begin to feed on that, they will stop feeding and uh, they stop feeding immediately. They don't die for a couple of days, which kind of gets you some satisfaction, possibly. Um, but they do stop feeding immediately. And the BT only targets caterpillar uh, type larvae, but that's what that is. So, well, is that something that turns, eventually turns into a butterfly? No, it's uh, it would be some kind of moth. Um, I'm not exactly sure which one, but those ones are those ones are pretty can be pretty destructive to. Um, I think what you may have might be like an arborvitae. Um, if it's kind of pale green and and low, maybe only about what how how high did you say? A, uh, a well, foot, or where, where it kind of clumps up, and where it's real thick, it may, I don't think it's more than a foot high. Oh, okay. So it's, it's it may actually just be a juniper, um, but that's it. Sounds like you've got some bagworms going on in there, and they you will know, they, they will move to other plants that are within that same family too. So if you did have any uh, larger junipers or um, arborvitaes, um, things that we think of as a fir. Uh, or, or those kind of evergreen type plants that, you know, up north, those were the evergreens. Down here, we have a lot more that's evergreen. They, they, they just attack evergreen. That's like, I've got other bushes that are close by there. I would probably treat the ones that are immediately surrounding only because they may just, there may be some that'll move and try to hang out and, and survive, and, and you want to be able to, to knock that population down quite a bit. So I, I go to the, the store like Lowe's or whatever, and I ask for BT spray. You're looking for, uh, I would probably actually try, um, you know, maybe an Ace. I'm not, I, I, I hate to say it. Lowe's doesn't have it. Uh, uh, Seminole Feed, um, Tractor Supply, places like that. You're either looking for a product that contains capital B and small t, BT, um, or it might go by the name Dipel or it might go by the name of thuricide. The dipel is usually a dust. The thuricide would be a liquid you would mix with water and be able to spray. Okay, it's spelled what? Di, D-I-E-P-I-L-L, -L, dipel, just like it sounds? Right, dipel, D-I-P-E-L, is one. The other would be thuricide, T-H-U-R-I-C-I-D-E. Okay. But those are, it's all the same, it's all BT, it's all Bacillus thuringiensis. It's just a different way of, of it being uh, packaged. You, you, now that, that's a liquid spray, I, I mix with water and put it yeah. in my, my sprayer and just uh, saturate that's, the That's going right? to be the best way to do it. Yeah, you don't have to spray it to the point of runoff. Put it just, you know, spray the underside of the leaves, spray the top side of the leaves, um, and let it be. It'll do its thing. Do you think the evergreen will come back where it was? Uh, it it should. It should. You might need to once you've yeah you know, let it go for a couple of weeks and then just take yeah you know, run your hand down along and and remove the brown if the you know if it's real brittle cut out the bad stuff and let it let it try to come back out from the from the inside. It might look a little rough for for a short while. You know maybe even this season it might look a little bad, but it should come back. It's kind of interesting. I've lived here now for about twenty years. 
Never had that problem before. All of a sudden, I got these little raccoon things all over the place. Yeah, yeah. They they and they happen. They, they'll find an area. They may have come in to the neighborhood on on. Uh, somebody else planted something and there might have been some there uh, a, a bird had eaten one at some point and you know who knows they they find yeah. their way in uh, even in even in gated community garden pests show up okay well thank you very much I'll you're welcome drop your supply and uh, pick up some of that stuff all righty yeah they don't they don't okay, have to you. they don't have to pass the security guard <laughs> right right <laughs> they, get a community. They, get, they get a little sneaky in there <laughs> All right, so before we go to the book, can I tell yeah. you, we, this morning we had a topic. It was called Things That Became Expensive When They Became Hip. Right. And on that list, there were three things that apply to what you do. And, okay. And based on the prices we saw at Bob Wine's right. uh, Community Gardens and Nursery, I don't know that it, I, I don't know much about this stuff, but right. it seems, okay. It says farmer's markets, mm-hmm. mason jars, and house plants have all become expensive because they're popular, they're hip. Because, right, Is right. that true for house plants? Um, uh, uh, maybe a little bit. Really? Um, I don't know if houseplants so much. I think just the industry has gotten a little more expensive, but that's just based upon supply and demand. Usually, that's and everything. I think that's yeah, what, yeah. You know, yeah. even with the with the farmers markets, I think that became a. Um, and and I hate to say this because I know we have several farmers markets around, but once you put the title of organic on it it has a tendency to raise the price probably by at least 50 percent if you oh, notice really? even uh-huh. in the supermarket you will see the regular oh, tomatoes for a dollar 89 a pound and you'll find organic tomatoes are 2.99 a pound and i'm sorry they are a tomato it's just how they <laughs> squished the pest um <laughs> uh I'm, I'm gonna but, buy the, i'm gonna buy the florida tomato when i'm going to make that option do you do anything with the mason jars Mason jars, um, they, they make great things for iced tea. <laughs> yeah, you know, the it's bigger. Sa- the- well, it says they they went up from fifty cents to three dollars. Right, and that's because people got into home canning mm. some somewhat, and also within craft supplies. Uh, I was actually just watching one today where somebody, and it was like, uh, you could have skipped a whole lot of that video and just showed me the beginning, the middle, and the end oh, really? on it, to to because I never finished watching how to make the fairy light, fairy jar light. Uh, it took too long. Take your four minute video down to about two and a half, <laughs> and you've got my attention. <laughs> but, well, because the uh, Bob Wines, one of right. your sponsors, and we'll give away yeah. a certificate later on for twenty dollars. By right. the way, Mother's Day is coming up, so. Oh yeah, yeah. But I, I will say one thing: when I started gardening here in Marion County, and my mother in law and I would go out to, um, I, I guess it was. I don't think. Home Depot and Lowe's had had garden centers much at that point, but Walmart did, and they had their vegetable plants and things, and and you could go get a four pack of tomato plants for forty nine cents. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I and think. they and they'd go on sale for thirty nine cents. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that was perfect because you could get four. We could get four cherry tomatoes and four bell peppers and four nice slicing yeah, tomatoes yeah, yeah. and fill a garden without having to buy nine of them for three dollars and eighty nine cents. <laughs> which which or doesn't one, sound like much until you compare or it. one larger plant for three dollars and fifty nine cents. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. Um, we're up against the break. We've got the the, the, the little music thing yeah. happening here. So, and I, I know somebody's waiting online. If you ha- can hang on, that would be awesome. We've got. It looks like the news is what two minutes, and then there's two more minutes of commercials. So we got a four minute break. Uh, you're welcome to hang in there, or if you want to call back, that's okay too. But we'll be, we will be right back. This is WOCA O'Callaghan. <laughs> Fox News Radio, I'm Pat O'Neill. The two front runners hoping to solidify their leads in today's presidential primaries. Donald Trump aiming for a sweep of all five of the northeastern states, Connecticut, Delaware, Rhode Island, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. As for the Democrats, Hillary Clinton is already looking past Bernie Sanders, deepening her attacks on Trump in recent campaign events. Fox Radio's Tanya J. Powers. Protests in Raleigh, North Carolina yesterday. As lawmakers return to start their legislative session, the demonstrations against House Bill 2, a Republican-backed law that limits bathroom access for transgender people. 54 were arrested. Authorities say a Walt Disney cruise ship off the coast of Cuba rescued three fugitives last week who were wanted in New Orleans for credit card fraud. The Disney fantasy ship found them clinging to a capsized boat. Fox News, we report, you decide.
Napa guy knows the good thing about an old truck is you can treat it like an old truck, meaning however you want. Because the paint job looks best covered in mud, dense build character, and unpaved roads are unscientifically proven to be 70% more fun. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep that thing running longer, stronger. Because it's not old, it's broken in. That's Napa know-how. Life can be unpredictable. That's why you should take control of your family's future now with an estate plan bundle from LegalZoom. Not sure whether you need a last will or a living trust? LegalZoom's network of independent attorneys in 48 states can help you decide which one's right for you without billing by the hour since LegalZoom isn't a law firm. Plus, updating your estate plan as your family and assets grow couldn't be easier. Enjoy your life. Use LegalZoom for the legal stuff. LegalZoom. Legal help is here. Hi, this is Master Gardener Carol Ann Baldwin, the host of In the Garden with Carol Ann. Let me tell you what I use to get away from fertilizing the old-fashioned way. I use Dynamite Premium Plant Food for my flowers and veggies. With its easy, earth-friendly, patented coating, there's no risk of over-fertilizing. Dynamite Premium Plant Food releases food for six months, so there are no highs or lows during the growing season. Dynamite Premium Plant Food contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium and micronutrients like copper, magnesium, iron, and zinc. This gives my plants explosions of bloom for both flowers and veggies. When I use Dynamite Premium Plant Food, I only have to use it once every six months and not worry about the nutrients washing out with heavy rains or irrigation. To learn more about the Dynamite family of products, go to dynamiteplantfood.com. Dynamite Premium Plant Food is so easy to use that you'll spend less time working in your garden and more time enjoying it. Black cow, the mature manure black cow. We often mention enriching your native soil with black cow when you prepare a flower bed or a vegetable garden, or plant new shrubs and trees. Adding black cow helps retain moisture and adds millions of healthy microbes to your soil. Healthy soil means healthy plants, but you can also top dress with black cow composted cow manure even after planting. You can come back a month or two later and spread black cow on top of the soil around the root zone of a shrub or tree, or spread it evenly over a flower bed or rows of vegetables in your garden. Black cow releases nutrients slowly. It won't burn tender roots because it's fully composted. Look for the bright yellow and black bag at your favorite nursery or garden center and visit the website too at black cow spelled with a K dot com. Black cow, the mature manure black cow. All right, 25 minutes before 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. 72 degrees. Let's return to Carol Ann Baldwin's In the Garden with Carol Ann. And somebody's been patient enough to wait through the whole break, Carol Ann. Good morning. You're on the air. Thank you for waiting. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you know what? I forgot, I forgot what I was going to ask you. <laughs> oh, no. Let's <laughs> see. I must be getting old. Uh, <laughs> was it Bell? Was it uh, was Mason jars or farmers markets or how's Mason it? jars? That Mason was it. Jars. There, there you go. go. There you go. What you got? Um, yeah, there's a there's a, a trendy restaurant or there was a trendy restaurant in the Orlando area uh, called the Maison Jardin. <laughs> for house and garden. Right. But the local people in the area refer to it as the Mason Jar. Oh. <laughs> there you go. And I think there yeah. have been restaurants, smaller mom and pop kind of place with the country type cooking, that home, you know, that home comfort food cooking. That's the Mason Jar. Didn't we have one? I don't know. Here that does sound fun. one in Bellevue for a time. Okay, yeah. that's where it was, yeah. Yeah. So. Maison Jardin. Okay. Have a good I like that. Thank you. you. Too, he waited all that time to tell us that. <laughs> well, I, I want to before we do get going on on anything. So I don't forget. Um, got some upcoming things through the Master Gardeners and. First off, I, I want to make sure everybody writes the calendar. It's not this Saturday, because this Saturday is still April. But May the 7th, Saturday, May the 7th, from 8 to noon, is the Marion County Master Gardener's Spring Plant Sale. These are the, This is the sale, or the spring sale, that the Master Gardeners have propagated and grown these plants. These are ones that are grown within the propagation department. 
of Master Gardeners. It's a fundraiser. Uh, admission is free. No pets. Uh, payment is cash or check only. They will be having fruit trees, ornamentals uh, trees, shade trees and shrubs, as well as native plants, herbs and perennials, pollinator plants, butterfly plants, hummingbird plants, and sorrel, which is sorrel is the one that you can make the, uh, the sorrel tea, uh, neat little beverage. And they will also have some other activities going on. There'll be rain bear, bear rain barrels available, uh, the Malaluca mulch for sale, micro-irrigation supplies, all the garden publications, and Master Gardeners to uh, obviously answer your questions while you're there, the, the mobile clinic, um, soil test kits. I don't think they'll be accepting the soil samples there, but they'll send you home the, the information on how to do it properly or the one... Um, and or having the kits that you could send up to the university for a more in-depth uh, soil uh, analysis. And of course, the 4-H'ers from South Oaks 4-H will be providing the toting service. Those kids work for tips, uh, and that helps them either with their summer camp programs or other programs that they're working on throughout the year. And remember, these 4-H kids are, are today, they're kids, they're tomorrow's leaders. There you so, go. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, we love to support those kids as well. But Saturday, May the 7th, 8 to noon, the spring, the spring plant sale. And then if you want some classes to learn how to do stuff, you can get out your calendar and mark these down. Or you can always call over to the Ag Center, call the Extension Office, 671-8400, and, and leave them your email address, and you will get on their email list, and you'll get the same information. They don't sell your list. They don't, they don't spam you. They send you the information when, when clinics and things like that are upcoming. But the 3rd of May, which is if the... If the seventh is Saturday. The third is um, Wednesday. I believe it's Wednesday. They don't give me the day of the week on this. No, first Tuesday. That's Tuesday, May third. Uh, Dunellen Public Library has the the ask the they call it ask the experts uh, on the first Tuesday of each month from ten to one. It's pretty much just come in with your gardening related question. And so first uh, Tuesday, and then May the 6th, so Friday, at Freedom Library, um, out here off of 200, it's off of 95th Street, we'll be having the uh, uh, part of their series, Pests in, in the Home Landscape. Uh, that one, they are not giving me a time on that one on this list. Uh, look and double check. No, no time on it. So again, call over 671-8400. There's a couple other ones coming up later in the month, but I, maybe I'll mention them yeah, if somebody has on the third, 13th, the 17th, and the 25th. Uh, of course, Don Ellen's just a repeat. Oh, I will put this one in. May 25th, Prospective Master Gardener Orientation. You think you want to be a Master Gardener? This is the one you want to come out for. It's uh, It's... It's a two-hour program beginning at 10 a.m. You need to come out for the full two hours. Don't just think, oh, I can show up at about 11 and catch up and find out what they're doing. No, figure your figure go in from 10 to noon uh, for the orientation because there's usually a, uh, a presentation and, and an introduction and a full explanation of what it takes to become a master gardener. They will give out or uh, applications normally at this time. You can actually speak to some of the master gardeners that are there that help put that together so that you can answer a few questions that maybe you're not sure that you know maybe you work and you know do you have enough time to be a master gardener maybe you have some physical limitations are you still able to be a master gardener is there still a place for you and the answer to all those questions is yes uh, pretty much anyone you know you just have to you have you do have to you, you're going to work hard if you yeah, become a master yeah, yeah. to become the master gardener because it's no longer a a fairly simple say high school level course it's now been elevated to a about a college level course and your cost is going to be what normally it always has been the cost of the books um and then there's all kinds of, and it's a 13 i believe it's a 13 week program one day a week but if you're interested if you ever wanted to say hey listen I think I have the time I would love to be a master gardener what do I have to do come out on the 25th of May at 10 a.m. and and find out so, very good yeah and, and you are you speaking at the, mm -hmm. at the event I'm I I 
don't think I am. I was going to look at my, my calendar and see if I would have the availability just to be able to go out. You know, I haven't, I haven't made it out there for that in a few years, but that's just because the way my, way my schedule falls. And Do you think most like people that. become master gardeners for personal aid, just want knowledge for their own selves, or do they do like you do, where you kind of share the knowledge coming on the uh, radio every week? Originally, I became a master gardener because I wanted to know more. Just for it, yourself. It is usually, I think most of us come in with that thing of, I, I want to know. But I'm willing to share what yeah. I know. Oh my you gosh! Know, Every I like week to, you do it. You know, it's it's and no. I mean, I mean, Lowe's originally, and but I'm just saying, originally, even as as gardeners and things like that, we we grow a little vegetable garden, and we love to share our our produce with our friends and neighbors and and right, such like that. Right, well, right. we also want to go. Well, what did you do to make your tomatoes share grow the so well? Yeah. We want to share yeah. the knowledge too. So even though it's kind of selfish that we want to know more on how to do things, yeah, most all thing, of though. us most all of us also want to go. You know, I want to know more. But I also want to be able to tell somebody else how to do it, and that's uh, yeah. that's what we do as a, you know selfish. as a whole. Selfish is often a negative connotation. It, it, it does, but I mean it's it's one of those. But things. So you got to do stuff for yourself. It's if, like if it's you like grabbing the oxygen you mask. Yeah, if you don't learn yourself, you can't share it with others. Exactly. Yeah, yeah so of course. And that was uh, again that that uh, butterfly I had. I mean I. I tried to look it up a, a little bit, but I said, you know, I have another resource here. And so I threw the three, four pictures I had taken of this small blue and black uh -huh. butterfly, and he actually is very small, um, out onto a Facebook group page on, on flower, you know, on growing plants and things that usually instead of hitting an entomology one, um, and we had a whole lot of fun trying to find out what yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, and actually, and actually one of the girls says, I can, you know, I can help holler at somebody I know who's an expert if you'd like, you know, she didn't automatically do that. And I said, sure, go for it. Cause nobody else was real sure what I was looking at was, was not a native to the United States, even. Oh, really? So I was not looking in the right place and came back with, with an identification. Huh. And it was just a lot of fun to have the input. So even if you're gardening, look yeah. up those kind of things, too. They're fun to fun to get on. And uh, some, of them, some of them may not fall into your taste. Some may be more advanced uh, than you want to you feel like you fit in or uh, and you don't have to respond to everything you see. And they're good fun. I have a question. OK. How would you remedy? without cutting the tree down, okay. a root that is lifting the driveway, a tree root that is lifting the driveway. Oh, that's a tough one. Can you cut that root without killing the tree and pull it, it out? It depends on how far away the tree is. Um, you may be able to do it. I'm not sure, you know, depending on, again, how large is the tree, where's the tree mm. situated to that area, um, but if it's lifting a driveway, you know, it's how close is it to the rest of the foundation of of the home. Mm -hmm. If the lot is small, it might be the thing of going, you know, that tree's got to go. Well, it's lift the, if it was lifting the foundation, you you definitely would get rid of the yeah, tree. Yeah, I would, yeah. Most but sometimes definitely. the driveway, it's like, oh, man, I got a bump right there. Right. Got, and, I, and it may Every just summer be the, it's bigger. and Right, right. And it, and it might even be the kind of thing you go, yeah, whatever, I'll just live with it. Just drive over it. <laughs> just, just keep driving over it. If the, if the root keeps growing there, um, it sounds like it's probably a pretty big root, which I'd be concerned on trying to remove it mm. um, just because that's offering a balance where that root zone is uh, this show always goes fast we've got another 15 minutes if you would like to call in you are definitely invited to do that it doesn't have to be a question plus during the next 15 minutes sometimes we'll give some at some point we'll give away a $20 gift certificate to Bob Wines Camellia Gardens and Nursery don't forget Mother's Day is coming up and we'll be right back the weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. And this Tuesday, partly sunny with highs ranging from 81 at the coast to 89 inland. Clear Tuesday night, low 64 inland, about 70 along the coast. For Wednesday, partly sunny with a shower or thunderstorm in spots in the afternoon, but mainly dry along the coast. The high 83 at the coast. Thursday, partly sunny and very warm, high 85 at the coast, up to 92 inland. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. 
Black Cow Composted Cow Manure is a terrific organic soil amendment. We start with cow manure from dairy farms and then compost it a full 90 days. The result is an all-natural, dark, rich soil amendment that's great for everything you grow. Flowers, vegetables, shrubs, trees, and lawns, too. Look for Black Cow in the bright yellow and black bag at your favorite nursery or garden center. Black Cow, the mature manure, Black Cow. Hey, I'm Gary. And I'm Eric. Did you know that Red Eye Radio is on WOCA The Source every night from 2 to 6 a.m. and it's live. That's right. No tape shows here. We know that the news doesn't sleep. And neither do we. So we're here with you live from 2 till 6 a.m. every weekday. Call us 866-90-RED-EYE. So join me, Gary McNamara. And me, Eric Harley, every weeknight to discuss the latest in news and entertainment. Right here on WOCA The Source. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that, I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that, too. I need a new roof line, a new spoiler, and a new yep, truck. Yep, we can even do that, too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show, too. Well, as a matter of fact, join me, Matt Gibbs, from Sunrise Automotive, every Tuesday at 10 for auto repair with personal care right here on The Source. All right, 13 minutes before uh, 10 o'clock. Caroline Baldwin is here, and the phone lines are open if you want to call Caroline. And real quickly, can I do this? Yeah. Um, but I just went to the Bob Wines Facebook page okay. to see if they had any specials, and they do. All right. They posted a special 18 hours ago, right. so that was yesterday sometime, right. I guess, right? Uh, they have fragrant Confederate Jasmine vines on sale. They said okay. they're, they're currently blooming. Yeah. Buy one, get one free. Nice. They're selling them for $9.99 each. Cool. Okay. And I've got a $20 gift certificate. And so you can get one. Actually, you can get two. Yeah. And then you get two more. You get two more. I guess, right? Yeah, you can plant a whole fence down. <laughs> um, this is a pretty plant. They, they yes, have, they are very fragrant, too. They have a nice close-up of it yeah. here. So anyway, uh, $20 if you, is yours. If you call right now, just ask Caroline a question or just say hi to Caroline. Anything. Just, we, just, we, just, get, we want you to call Caroline. Give me Caroline. a gift certificate. 622 <laughs> And uh, it's yours. So there we go. There we go. And I'll write okay. your name down. It'll be waiting for you. There okay. we go. Good morning. You got a gift certificate and you got somebody ready to answer your questions. Super. Who's this? Uh, this is Rick. 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 You, you know where we are, right? A- absolutely. Absolutely. I do have a question. Okay. Okay. You got it. And my, I'm putting your name on the gift certificate. All right. Sounds great. Hey, Caroline. Yeah. I need to put a quick privacy hedge up do you recommend viburnum yeah yeah oh, that's okay. a that's a good one yeah and if you I can do. if you I can get some decent size red tops. yeah the red tops the only issue with red tops and haven't you know that you don't see a whole lot of them any too much anymore is over a period of time they have a tendency to get real thin at the bottom and they'll get a there is a fungal disease that does affect the red tops and i think really on that i'd 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 go with the viburnum. All righty. Well, I sure appreciate it, and I look forward to going to buy wines and picking up my stuff. There, there you, go. you go. Good job. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Thank you, Rick. Yep. Thank you. I'm curious what's going on next door. You need to put up a privacy fence yeah, right just away. Right away. Get that one up. Well, <laughs> what's going on next door? <laughs> oh, somebody's got a new pool. Oh, <laughs> he's got a new pool. <laughs> yeah, but that uh, just for fun. <laughs> but. Um, one thing I will say with with gardening, I was over at the ag center this morning. Obviously, it's a my Tuesday morning time. I go over there, and I'm seeing. I think we're getting weather conditions. You need to watch for powdery mildew on your squash because I've got some squash. It's got some powdery mildew. It has slowed down production of fruit, uh, which I've already. I did get a couple squash this morning, but um, I'm not seeing a whole lot of flowers. So I did need to spray this morning for fungus for powdery mildew, um, and then going to keep my fingers crossed i'll watch if next week i'm not seeing much improvement just out they'll come so that it doesn't go any further than than what it is or even in a few days if i'm not you know oh i'm looking at the blue butterfly now boy you it is yeah and and he's little he's just a small butterfly about the size of a a pretty blue isn't uh, it it is a a quarter maybe uh, he might have been a little maybe a half dollar i'm not even sure if he was really that big because you, if you see the picture, you see them on a twig. But uh, so our rain, our weather conditions, we've had some cool overnights. Humidity's been kind of high. And as I had learned one time before, is that when your humidity 
is uh, high with your temperatures being a little bit high, uh, you start adding up to like a 175. If you take your 70, if say you had 75 degrees and 75% humidity, mm -hmm. those add up to 150. Okay. You've got optimum conditions for fungal growth. So we've had, I don't know what the humidity overnight's been, but I think it's been up in the 80%. So 150 is the magic number? 150 is the magic number uh, okay. on that. And I know we've had like cool Well, evenings. 92 is the expected high Saturday. This coming it's, Saturday. Ooh, going to be a warm one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well. It's, it's, it's May. It's, you know, it's... We we've were talking about this morning. The, yeah, that's what we were mentioning we this morning. We had a wonderful spring. You can't complain. Spring. No, no. Anybody who complains, everybody says, oh my gosh, it's been hot. No, it isn't. It's been spring. It's been really nice. It's been in the low 60s in the mornings and in the evenings. It's been wonderful temperatures, so enjoy it. Um, I, I don't complain when it gets hot. I just get another bottle of water and uh, you just figure out how to work with it around what you like to do in your act, outdoor activities. Um, it's amazing how a, a fan set out on a porch can make things all the more pleasant. Absolutely. You know, when you're and done a in the garden, tea. a glass of ice or tea. Or a mason jar of ice mason, tea. There you go. Get one <laughs> of the great big mason jars, fill it full of ice, pour your iced tea or lemonade over that, and you're all set. Um, another thing is, is do, it has been cool. It has been nice. Um, maybe you're not getting out there in, into the extended warmer parts of the day but stay hydrated out there it's been you know all winter now all spring it's starting to warm up don't forget to carry that bottle of water with you if you're getting a little further from the house put your little cooler just a little lunch box a little cold pack in there a couple bottles of water to keep your hydrate you know your hydration up um, do you keep something on you when you're in the garden to like have a quick remedy for like an insect bite or or anything. I, like I don't. Um, I I probably should, and I and I know there's a, a couple of different. What um, is it normally? Ammonia is that normally what's in those things? Ammonia in those things or menthol. So menthol. yeah, uh, like a, so a mentholatum or a camp what they call campophenic. I don't uh -huh. know if anybody remembers that old yeah. belt remedy, but like mentholatum is a is a gel. You know, it, it's like Vicks. You know, or that kind of stuff. If you get a bite, you can rub some of that on, and it's going to help. Right. Or you can buy the commercial, like Sting Ease or or After Bite and things like so that. So you can carry, carry something with you? The I don't. I used, I'm not that far from the house or something to, That's true. to be able to That's go true. get something. But it is handy to have it in, um, say, if you have a little outbuilding you know where maybe you keep a cooler or if you have a little um little greenhouse building or a little shade house like i've got if you've got a little fridge in there something easy enough to keep things like that so mm -hmm. nothing gets in them you know in there as well as some cold drinks uh you know, so that you're staying hydrated. That's one of the big things uh with the work I do. We push that as, as a safety topic at this time of year is because we forget you know, you might get up and have had a couple cups of coffee, maybe a glass of juice with your breakfast, uh, but at 10, 11, 12 o'clock in the, in the late morning, you haven't had anything since 7, you're becoming dehydrated. And once you know you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. That's what they say. That's exactly yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it takes you longer to absorb, you know, to get that back in there. It takes you longer to recover. And so, you know, just carry a bottle of water. Even if you say you freeze, you know, you have a reusable cup or something like that, freeze part of it. Pour your water in. That way it stays cold. Because, you know, who wants, you know, who wants hot water, you know, out there? You <laughs> want something cool. Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, it makes it all the better. So, yeah. that stay hydrated. Watch you don't... Pull your back out because it's something maybe you have not done any gardening in a few years. I've been talking to a few people that have finally putting in a garden. They finally own a oh, home in the backyard. And, you, yeah, you pull your back. You pull a muscle. You you know, any of those things. Uh, don't overdo it. Take your time. Ask for some help from some friends or whatever that already do the, those kind of tasks. Or if they have a if they have a rototiller, <laughs> instead of turning the garden over with a shovel, if they have a rototiller, you can borrow or they'll help you do it. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask folks. It's you know, raised beds work. You got a nice, not a nice pictures on a, a lot of nice pictures on your on your uh, Facebook in the garden Facebook yeah. page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the stuff that that have been harvested. And How, how's that tree doing that you were pulling the roots away from? I have to ask Kathy. I'm going to have to give her a call and and ask her if she's listening. Text me, uh, and we'll let everybody know next week of how that's doing. Do you know what I want to down. ask you? When you, when you go to the grocery store, okay, mm -hmm. and and I think I let you know I'm trying to we're trying to save money. We're trying to eat healthier. Right. All right. So I said, well, we'll just get baked. We'll just get potatoes. We'll bake our own. Right. Okay. Right. 
So Florida potatoes, mm-hmm. they don't look the same as like no. the Idaho potatoes. No, they don't. Do they taste the same? Uh, they actually, I, I think they taste very good. Better? Um, they got like a cleaner looking skin, if you know what I mean. Well, the, the skin in Florida potatoes is very thin. Oh, it is? It doesn't harden off um, like the like the Idaho's and, and those potatoes that are long-term storage potatoes. When Florida potatoes come in, they you really, you come in and you use them quickly. Uh, potato chip manufacturers do use p- Florida potatoes in, in Florida, but they'll keep their Idaho's off to the side and quick use these Florida potatoes, and they actually fry up a lighter because color. Because they go quick? Because they, they have a quick, that thin, the skin is more is thinner, and so they have a faster spoilage. Oh, okay. But the fresh Florida potatoes, while we have them going, are so good. I just harvested a nice little batch of potatoes, may have to make some. That you grew yourself? Yeah, I grew myself. Oh, really? Dug them out of there this morning. Have some from last week I dug out. Have some fresh squash, some cucumbers. Man, so, you're a role yeah. model. It's good good stuff. But, yeah, your Florida potatoes generally don't store well. So get them and enjoy them. Is that what's, um, is that what's in this basket in this photograph? Yes. Those are ones actually from the other week. And they're red. Container. Yeah, the little red potatoes are yummy. The grocery store, they're not red. Or is you it can get red potatoes. Two different types? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah okay. you can get red potatoes. I didn't grow the blue ones. I didn't think my husband would get into blue potatoes. Why? Do they th- taste blue. different? No. No, they just, just look... Psychologically, I'm sure they do. <laughs> just like yellow watermelons and... and oh, really? You know, that psychologically, yes, I close my eyes to eat a water, yellow watermelon because they don't won't taste the same. You're influenced by it, even though and you know better. It, right. It's like drinking water out of a coffee cup. You take that first sip, it's supposed to taste like a hot beverage. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I, I know everybody out there in, in Radio Land's going, "Uh huh, I know just what she means." Well, I, I've I've, yeah. tri- I've tricked a few people with this. Yeah, you put hot water in a black cup. Oh, and they take the coffee black. Right, they can't see. They it. often say, "I say, how's the coffee? It's good." You go, "Wow, there's no <laughs> coffee in there. That's just hot water." Hot water. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. Yeah. But yes, it will taste different. And same thing with the yeah. I, I, I eat red watermelons because the yellow ones. Did you see there was a picture? There was a picture uh, on the internet. I guess it was Facebook. The watermelon rind was the almost the whole watermelon. The, the watermelon. Oh, was it? The edible part was like the size of a baseball, but the watermelon was the normal size watermelon. So when they cut it open, it was like. <laughs> There's also had was this se- seven inches of, of rind on both wow. sides of the of the. Then that watermelon was not ripe. It had not finished. Oh, is that right? Is it's that what that means? It's possible that it just had not gotten. Oh, that okay. Far, so they just didn't know what strange, they were doing. Yeah, or a strange. I'm not sure what that would have done. I mean, I've seen some pretty thick ones, but usually it is because that watermelon just hasn't finished becoming a watermelon. Oh, <laughs> okay. It wasn't ready yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, have you seen the where they do the elastic bands around them? And, and yeah, and then they eventually. Yeah. Yes. It's kind of a waste of a watermelon, but yeah. hopefully you get another it's one. Kind of a funny idea, though. Isn't it, it is funny. Fun, fun, fun game in the in the summertime. So, but. well, there is Stanley Spencer singing Bid, for you, bidding us adieu. So, did good. he do all this himself? Is this him overdubbed yeah. on himself? On himself? Wow! Yeah, he did a good he, job. He had fun with that. I think. I know. I know. I appreciate it. And uh, every time I hear it, I, I tell people, I said, "You'll know you have the right station if you're tuning in right there and you hit it. That's me. <laughs> don't don't tune past that one." <laughs> so. But everybody have a great gardening week. Uh, look around for worms on your on your tomatoes and things like that, and get squishing and yeah. Yeah, and then uh, go to Bob Wines and go to Black Cow and yes. and, and yes, support the sponsors of this program. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 96.3 FM, The Source.